Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to go from bad cuts and engravings like this all the way to getting nice, perfect cuts and engravings like that. And we're going to get there by going through several real examples here that show how to adjust each variable along the way. Believe it or not, it actually took me months to figure out how to do this correctly, and so I'm hoping I can save you some time and some hassle in this video by walking you through the process that I used to get to such nice results. And I should also mention that we're going to get to these nice, clean, perfect cuts and engravings like this without using any type of masking or any type of sanding. And so that's pretty important because it can actually save you a ton of time if you're able to get these same results that I'm gonna show you how to get here in this video today. But in order for this to work at all, you actually have to get multiple things all working together correctly, and I very creatively call them the four ingredients to perfect cuts and engravings. So let's go ahead and jump right into ingredient number one, which is airflow. First off, let me just briefly define what I mean by airflow, and in this case, I'm specifically talking about the airflow that goes underneath your material. So for example, if you are trying to do a engraving directly on top of a spot spoiler board or just a piece of scrap wood like that, then this would be what I would call no airflow. But before I talk about how to actually improve your airflow, I wanted to first show you some examples of the difference that this actually makes. So first of all, this is our no airflow example. So this is basically the baseline, and it would be that scenario I showed you just a second ago of where your material is just sitting straight on a spoiler board or a piece of scrap wood. And as you can see here, the uh, cuts and the engraves look decent on the front. But if you flip to the back, that's where you really notice how bad the scorching can get. And so this is obviously charred really bad on the edges. There's a lot of uh, scorching across, across the material all the way around here. And so you really don't want this, especially if you're trying to do a project that is double-sided. This is a really bad result. And so you can improve this by improving your airflow. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. The first one is the most common, and it's probably the 80% the solution that's gonna work pretty well for most people most of the time, and that's using a honeycomb. So if you don't know what a honeycomb is, uh, I'll show you just a little clip of what that looks like. This is a honeycomb. Um, but anyway, with a honeycomb, you again have a similar looking front, but then when you flip it over, um, you'll notice that the, the scorching is much improved. There's still some little black scorch marks here, uh, here and here, and you can see there's a bit on the top as well. And so if you were making this for like a business, say, you'd probably have to do a little bit of touch-ups. Maybe it's just some spot sanding in these places, but it is dramatically improved over what you did uh, with the spoiler board that I showed you just a minute ago with the no airflow situation. And so that's the sort of 80% solution. If you wanted to take this a step farther, you can also do what I call the jerry-rigged elevation, or basically making a custom airflow jig. Uh, I'll show you a clip here. This is an example of one that I use in my own laser business. And basically what this is, is it's just some scrap blocks of wood glued to a piece of uh, aluminum, I believe it is, a, a piece of sheet metal here. And basically I use this as, as a jig. I put a piece of panel on it like that, and it basically creates airflow on all of the places where I need the airflow to be for a product that I do pretty frequently in my laser business. And so the thing that this is solving for the, the jerry-rigged elevation here is I'll show you on the back, if we flip it over and look at the cut, you can see that there's basically no scorch marks at all. And I think this is most uh, useful comparison when you compare it to the honeycomb. So I have the honeycomb here on the left and I have uh, the jerry-rigged solution here on the, on the right. And so these little, uh, on the honeycomb, these little black points that you get here are from flashback, from the little uh, filaments that make up the honeycomb. But with my jerry rig solution, I don't really get that at all. You'll see some black here, but I think that's actually just uh, some of the gooey stuff from when I set this on top of another piece of plywood. It's not actually a scorch mark. And so it's really clean all the way around. And uh, yeah, so if you wanna kinda take it from 80% to 100% clean, then you could create your own little jig like this or use some other solution that's going to eliminate that flashback that you get with your honeycomb. But even with perfect airflow, you could still get bad scorching along the sides like this if you don't also have ingredient number two dialed in, which is actually your air assist. So let's talk about that now. If you've already watched other videos on laser engraving, then it's very possible that you've heard about air assist before However, there's probably more to it than you think, and in fact, you might find that some of the things you've heard before are actually just plain wrong. But before you angry comment at me, let me explain using some actual real examples that I cut out on my laser while changing the air assist variable. 
Okay, so first of all, here is our baseline. If you do not use Air Assist at all, you're very likely to get bad scorch marks both on the top of your engraving like this and also on the back. And in fact, it's possible that your material won't always uh, cut all the way through. So you can see there's some little uh, hairs here where it didn't perfectly cut all the way through the material. And so those are some things that can happen. But also another thing that can happen is if you don't use Air Assist is you could actually have flame risk. You could have some of your material uh, catch on fire, which is of course not good, or you could have it not cut all the way through the material. Um, and so this is a really important thing to know how to use. So then you might go out and get yourself a basic air assist pump. So for example, I'll put a little clip in here of the first one that I got. You may have one like this or may have seen them before. And uh, this is a, a pretty basic little pump. And what I uh, eventually learned is that these have a PSI rating of about 4.35 PSI. And you can tell that it does actually help a lot to reduce the scorching on the front. So compared to the left-hand side here with no air assist, this is obviously much, much better, but it still does have a tiny bit of scorching. So you can see this little point on the corner there. It has a little bit of scorch marks there uh, in the corner. And then if you flip it over, you can see much more. So there definitely is still scorching here on the right-hand side with that uh, small air assist pump. And very long story short, I eventually learned that the reason that it wasn't cutting out perfectly without those scorch marks there is simply because of the power. So as I mentioned, these little air pumps have about 4.35 PSI. And I should also mention that there is nothing special or laser specific about these air assist pumps. Even though they are marketed for laser engraving, they're really just little air compressors. And if you've seen my previous video where I compare using one of these air assist pumps with a fish tank pump with a very similar construction, then you'll know that it got basically identical uh, performance, but you can even also compare this with just a regular air compressor. So I have an air compressor here, so let me just demonstrate this here real quickly. And I set it, it's hard to set it precisely, but I set it close to the same range, about four to five PSI. And um, as you can see on the cut, so look only at the cut here, um, that the, the results are nearly identical. That little scorch mark that we have uh, here in the upper right hand corner for this x -tool pump, you basically get the exact same thing on the air compressor, it's just on the upper left hand corner. And so that's probably where the cut started and stopped in each case, it just happened at a different location. But if we, we look at the front here, I think you'll agree that the cut is essentially identical. And then if we flip it over, uh, again, you're getting scorching on, on both sides, and I would say that the performance here is very, very similar between these two. But the reason we're talking about this at all is because what I eventually learned is that the power was the problem that I was having. And so if we put these aside, we can then pick up this uh, little sample here, which is air assist on, and I've written just in pin because I forgot to put it in the engraving, but 20 PSI. And ignore, ignore the text for now. We're just looking at the cuts. We'll come back to the text in a moment. So if you look around the cut real closely here, you'll notice that there are no corner scorch marks like we had. So already on the front, it's slightly better, but then let's look at the back. So here on the back, we're also doing much better. There's a tiny bit of scorching over here. You can kind of see that. There's a tiny bit of scorching over there, uh, but overall it's much, much better than uh, our little pump. So let's, let's just compare. Here on the left is our little pump, and here on the right is our air compressor set to 20 PSI. And obviously this on the right is just a, a much cleaner result. And by the way, everything in this video is basically an abbreviated version of what I teach in my diode laser bootcamp. And so if you like this approach, then you might also like to check that out. There is a link in the description below. But now let's go back to the engravings because you probably noticed that this engraving here looks pretty messy. And so now it's time to do a little bit of myth busting. <laughs> One thing that I've heard people talk about online and maybe you've seen or heard this too, is that you should pretty much always use your air assist for cuts and engravings. But in my experience, what actually works best is to use your air assist for cuts and to actually turn it off for engravings. So let me prove this to you here real quickly. So here is another sample that I'll just grab and pull in here. And here what I've done is I've done the cut with my air assist set to 20 PSI, and then I've just completely turned it off for the engraving. And so as you can see on the front, there are no noticeable scorching marks from the, the cut. And then if I look at the back, um, it's, it's pretty clean. We've got a little bit of scorching here at the top. Um, and uh, that I think I did this on a honeycomb. And so that is probably the flashback from the honeycomb. But overall, it is still cleaner than our uh, X-Tool uh, pump example here, our small pump example here. 
much cleaner. And so the, the cut is still pretty clean because we're using our, our 20 PSI, but also you'll notice that the engrave is way cleaner than this first example where I was using 20 PSI all around. So in this one, I used 20 PSI air assist on the engraving and on the cut. And on this one here, I used 20 PSI for the cut, but I turned it off entirely for the engraving and you can see it's just way cleaner. And this is actually the, the same setup essentially as I used originally to get that, uh, that perfect example here that I showed you. I think the only difference, if my memory is serving me correctly here, between this sample and my perfect sample is that for the perfect sample, I used the, the like custom uh, or jerry-rigged airflow uh, setup. And for this one, I think I used a honeycomb and that would explain that the, the reason why there's still a little bit of scorching here, but there's not on my perfect sample. And so these are really kind of showing you the, the clues to having your perfect setup for perfect cuts and engravings. But before you get too excited, we've also got to talk about ingredient number three, which is one of the things that beginners most often get stuck on, and that is dialing in your power and speed settings, because that is also going to affect how these cuts and engraves turn out. So let me just say, if you don't have your power and speed settings dialed in correctly, that's another thing that can lead you to getting bad results that are gonna look something like this. But the good news is I've already covered exactly how to find your own perfect power and speed settings in the Lightburn 101 video that's also in this series. Speaking of which, if you didn't know this already, the video you're watching right now is actually part of a series that's a laser engraving 101 mini course that I'm publishing here on YouTube. So I put a link to the playlist that contains the full series at the end of this video if you want to learn how to dial in your own power and speed settings or if you want to watch the full series. So if you've got your airflow, your air assist, and your power and speed settings all dialed in, then there's one more thing that could cause problems if you don't also have it set up correctly. And that is ingredient number four, which is your laser focus. Different machines do this differently, so I can't give you a one-size-fits-all demonstration of how to do this, but just as one example, I'll show you how this process is done on my Xtool B1 Pro. I go and I take the material, I put it underneath the laser head, and then I raise or lower the laser head module such that this little kickstand that's on the side is going to touch the material, and then I can tighten the laser head into place. So double check how to do this on your own laser machine because having this out of whack really can contribute to bad engravings or cuts. And with that all said, this is the link right here to the Laser Engraving 101 mini course that I talked about earlier. So if you just click or tap on that, it'll take you right to it. And if you are relatively new to laser engraving, then I highly recommend that you check that out because there's a lot of fundamental skills and information in there that I think is going to help you go from knowing nothing about laser engraving all the way to being able to complete your first project. So I'll see you over there. Bye.